you. Can you can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Does anyone remember that slogan? What which commercial was that? Verizon, yeah, mottos. Today, so yeah, there's a lot of like, mo we live in life with a lot of mottos and slogans and quotes and now memes and all these things that, and they're great. Like the, can you hear me now? It's really relevant, right? Who hasn't had that phone call of like, hey, can you hear me now? Yeah, can, how about now? I, I could hear you, well, now I think you're breaking up. You know, it's just really, it's really awkward. And, um, but they're memorable and they really kind of help you define your direction, right? So today, this is my third talk here, and usually I've gone into the whole technical artist thing, which is a great track, by the way, highly recommend it, um, especially if you've got the like left and right brain and you're not sure which one to decide on, you like them both and you can't, so you wanna be in the middle, technical artist, I recommend it. But um, I actually, today I wanna take you through my career and kind of instead use all the different mottos of the companies that I've worked at to kind of share with you my takeaways um, throughout my career and sign up some of the things that I try to follow in my mottos now. So I started at UF, go Gators. Got my undergrad there. Um, I studied computer science and got a digital arts and science, computer science degree. Um, but my takeaway, so their slogan is pretty much like, go Gators, right? I'll go Gators. We had a couple of Gators here. That was good. Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, but that kind of makes me think of being a team player. And being a team player when you're, is really important when you're on a team, right? And you really want to make sure that when you're in these environments and working with teams, that every one of you here is, is really smart because you're here and you're trying and you're, you want to be great at what you do. And you can really do great things. But when you bring all of you together, it is so amazing of people from all these different backgrounds to see what they can really do together. Like I was, um, when I was at LucasArts and it shut down, we formed a little team called ADG. And it was this little startup within the company uh, of Lucasfilm. That's also a little startup. But um, we, we started out with this demo and we wanted to prove what virtual production is and what we could do with it. And we made this amazing demo called the uh, Interactive Cinematics. And you could like watch this cinematic, but then you could pause it and you can go and explore these different timelines that might be happening and you gotta like get immersed into the world. And so, or you could go back to that timeline and watch the timeline, or you could see like, um, you know, you had C-3PO and R2 and Stormtroopers and you could see this, what the Stormtroopers are doing, but then you could see where C-3PO and R2 are hiding and then you could see where Boba Fett comes in. So you just, it's this discoverability and it was a really cool demo um, and it was great for us. And then they were all like, oh, well now we should do this and now we should do VR and ooh, a piece of candy and ooh, like we should try this. And we like started splitting up and trying all these different things and we weren't that one big team. And today I still think the IC demo is one of the best things that came out of that group. Um, so like working in a team is really powerful to bring all those different perspectives. All right. So then uh, here, I got my graduate here. I don't know if you guys know that, I came to FIA. Um, so just did that whole introduction, but reach for the stars is UCF's motto. And I think that's a great motto because it's really important to set goals, but to set goals that are just beyond your reach. I was sitting where you guys were, and we had a talk. Someone was up here actually from Lucasfilm, and I wanted to, my goal was to be in visual effects. And I was like, well, me, and I was told, like, you know, games is a good way to get into visual effects. There's a lot of similarities, some differences, but some people tend to jump over. And I was like, oh, it would be so great to work at Lucasfilm. Like, they are the, they are that end game. They're the best in the industry. I love all the movies. Who doesn't love Star Wars? Um, and then it happened to me my second job, and I was like, well, shit, what do I do now? Like, I didn't expect that to happen. I still don't know how that happened. But anyways, um, so then I had to set new goals, because then I could, I started realizing I can reach them if I really try. And kind of just keep setting them right beyond your reach. They keep you oriented. Does anyone here have, like, their one-year goal? I hope it's to graduate. Five-year goal, 10-year goal. 
they're always going to be changing. You always have to be adapting them, but you at least want to keep making them. And then see why they change. It's kind of fun. So then I went to EA and worked on the NCAA and Madden franchise. I was in like a central graphics team and uh, we prototyped the features for the next release. Um, and what I liked about their slogan, it's in the game, is that your career is kind of, you are playing a game. The, the companies, the politics, the, the people you're with, it's, there's, there's a game there. Some of my big takeaways is like you always want to, this is I'm not that big of a gamer, but my husband is, so always be casting. Is that, that's a thing, right? Like, you know, casting spells apparently. But I see that as like always be seeking opportunities, always be seeking learning and change, and always be seeking when, especially in times that are, are difficult, might get into that stuff a little bit later, but yeah, you don't want to settle. You want to kind of keep pushing yourself, and then you'll be able to find your best self. The other one I liked about this that kind of, this might be a little bit of a stretch, but like put the T in your expertise. I'm a very punny person, so I'm going to keep going with all the puns. Um, but when you're building out, when you start defining what it is that drives you, what, what your passions are, and what, what you keep gravitating towards, you do want to go deep. You want to really become an expert in there. You want to, but you also want to go wide. And you want to be aware of what everyone else around you is doing so you know how your stuff connects to them and makes this like big web. But it's really good to know something about everything, but also to know everything about something. And you can reverse that too if you wanted to. But it's, it's a balance, but you don't want to just, it's great to go deep and to be like that niche expert in something really, really specific, but it's also great to just still be wide so that you can communicate with all the other people. Then I went to Lucasfilm. May the force be with you all. Um, and there, I would encourage you to use the force with inside you. Still going with these puns, I'm sorry. Um, to speak up and to be confident because there's going to be a lot of repetitiveness in this talk, but because it's really your perspective that you're bringing to the table and it's the perspective that only you can bring to the table. And so you want to speak up, you want to ask questions, you want to be confident and approach people and um, people are always willing to help, but they can't read your mind. People are always willing to talk, but they don't know what you want to talk about. Um, they're always willing to help, and so don't be afraid to ask for help. And then there's always, there's also that balance. You know, you don't want to go to the dark side. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Um, maybe to use a lightsaber, you need balance. But the balance that I'm talking about is conversation, it is an art. You have to work on it. It's something you have to practice. Maybe start practicing with your friends and family first, but the more that you can express what's on your mind, the more that you can share those with other people. And that, there's another point I'm going with this. Oh, right. So talking is great and speaking up is great, but the other side of that, the balance, is listening. It's not interrupting someone in the middle of their thought, and it's trying to listen to other people and really understand where they're coming from because again it's everyone's perspective that really makes the difference is in understanding everyone's perspective. Just a thought. So then um, Lucasfilm we sold to Disney. George Lucas sold to Disney and we became Disney which is the happiest place on earth where all your dreams come true. Disney's pretty close here. You guys all go to Disney? I guess it's like college students don't have money, or I don't, you know. Anyone like grew up from around here? Oh, nice. Okay. Um, but yeah, Disney, happiest place on earth, where all your dreams come true, and that's what your workplace should be like. One of the things that I was always striving was, you put all this time in, right? You're spending hours here, days here, um, 
years. You put all this time into building what, who you are, and you want to strive to do what you want to do, right? You want to be happy 40 plus hours a week, maybe 60, depending on where you're at. The, you're going to be working a lot on what you do, so it's better to enjoy what you do, right? And to really want to go to work every day and really, and so that's, that's a, a great outcome of all the work that you've put in. But it's also about the culture of where you work and how you fit into where you work. So when you go to your interviews and they're interviewing you and they're asking you all the questions, it's not just a one-way interview. You're also interviewing them. You're also finding out, is this a place where you want to work? Is this a job that you want? Um, you know, they, they put it down. You make your resume and put bullet points. They make their job descriptions and bullet points. And it's like, what do those bullet points actually mean? Do they line up? Are they, are they what you want to do? Um, they also look for your passion. When people are interviewing you, they really look that you want to be there, that you're passionate about what you're doing, that you're excited to learn, that you're excited about what they're doing. Um, so it's, it's all about that fit. And then it does become the happiest place on earth. You do want to go there all the time. And you can make other people's dreams come true. All right, so this one I kind of have brought up. But Apple's slogan is think different. What I like about that is not only should you try to think different, but you do think different. You think different from everyone. And so when you're in meetings, sit at the table, bring your perspective. That is literally the most valuable thing. That's something that you have that no one else has. And so bring that perspective. And, and again, going back to the speak up, share your perspective. Yeah, there's, um, I remember there's this one talk where it's about data sets, especially with all this like machine learning going on. They're trying to, everyone has gaps in their data sets and they're always trying to fill it and maybe you can fill it. Like your, your opinion does matter and it is unique. And so the more different opinions come together, the more you can start forming a complete data set, both in your work and in your team. Um, the other thing that I want to bring up here is when you want to sit at the table, does anyone here know what imposter syndrome is? Imposter syndrome, yeah. And what is it? It's kind of like you feel like you're a fraud, maybe you don't belong here, maybe they're going to find out. How did I get here? I ask myself that a lot. But it's a real thing, and it's a real thing in the workplace. and. Um, but it's something that everyone struggles with. But as long as you remember that, yes, sit at the table, bring your perspective, you are going to bring something unique wherever you go. The skills you keep learning along the way. But it's what you have right now, which is what makes you who you are. So imposter syndrome doesn't ever get easier, but you can get stronger. So, evil, don't be evil. This is Google, was Google's slogan. Now they've got the build for everyone and do the right thing. And there is a lot of great meaning in this one. Like, just don't be evil. The, your network, and it, it kind of, it, it's, be mindful of your network because your network, you want to work on building it, but it is what's going to help you navigate the industry. The industry is really small. I've been in three different industries now, games, film, tech, and they're all, they actually, even together, they're really small. And your network is really going to be a support system because when a resume comes on a table, one of the first questions that a lot of employers ask is they ask around the room, Does anyone, has anyone worked with this person? Does anyone know this person? And honestly, that person's response is going to probably weigh more than what's on the paper 
or maybe even more than how you performed in your interview. If they can vouch for you, if they can say like they were a team player, they, they were passionate about what they did, I really enjoyed working with them, we, you know, they, they were contributing, that's going to speak a lot. That's going to, that's going to hold a lot of weight. And that's by building your network. That's by, you know, being a team player, being someone that people wants to work with, not being an evil person, just being human. We're all humans. We're all just trying to make cool shit. So be mindful of your network. Don't be evil. Be a team player. Oh, and the other side of that is, let me make sure I'm not getting ahead of myself. There are going to be difficult conversations. You might have already had some on your teams now. There are going to be challenging situations, people that maybe don't work well together. There's going to be things that are completely out of your control. But it's really how you hold your cool in those moments that speak a lot about your personality and what kind of team player you are. Are you a reactive person? Or are you going to actually listen and then share and you know, have a conversation about what's going on or try to confront the situation and figure out why it's not working? Relationships are hard, even in the workplace. But yes. Try to just don't be evil. It's a great one. Respect others. Respect confidentiality. Respect the experience that other people have. You bring great experience. Other people bring great experience. I could keep going. I'll move on. So now I want to go into those are that that's where I've gotten to this point. Now I'm at Google. I'm a I didn't even get into some of that. So at Apple, I was a technical artist. I was working on special projects. Um, at Lucasfilm, I was a technical artist. I was working on um, the, I started in animation. We did the Strange Magic movie, which I won't judge you if you didn't see. Um, and then there's, we, I worked on 1313, rest in peace. And then I worked on um, the, Trials of Tatooine VR experience. Um, and we did a lot of other AR, VR type of new media. We did a lot of virtual production. I was doing a lot of cool, like, um, we were on the mocap stage with cameras, and you can see in real time visually what you're doing, so you get a lot of that immediate feedback. Um, my favorite was always in between takes. We'd have, like, stormtroopers sitting Indian style, taking, talking all nice to each other, or, like, talking to Boba Fett, kind of. Or there's, like, C-3PO on his phone, you know, normal things that happen in Star Wars. Um, and then there at Apple, technical artist there on a special project. And then at Google now, I'm a technical animator, a little bit more focused, and I work on the Daydream team, which is um, they do a lot of their AR, VR experiences. So I'm helping to create content there, and how can we scale content, and how we can we um, allow our users to generate content. So now that that was where I am today, I want to share just a couple more of, of my mottos and some of the takeaways, big takeaways that I had. And one of them is the only constant is change. I was in R&D the majority of my career, still am in R&D, and it's always changing. There's always pivots, teams getting shut down, teams changing, um, projects changing. There's a lot of change. So you want to be willing to adapt. That's one of my biggest takeaways is the ability to adapt and being willing to adapt and trying to find what else could I learn here? What else could I try to get into here? How could I still make the most out of this situation even though it's really out of my control. Um, and to be resilient, to not just like feel defeated. It's okay to feel defeated, but then do something about it. Be like, okay, how am I gonna make the most of this? How am I gonna, I can't, I can't, I don't have control of this situation, but I have control about what I can do. Um, and yeah, finding, the, and that will help you find those opportunities. That will help you actually be able to see them and to recognize them and to seize them. This one, work-life balance. In grad school, I did not have a work-life balance. Who here has a work-life balance? Oh, 
Oh, wow. Okay. Awesome. Kind of. Yeah, kind of. It's really hard. It's, it's hard to have a work-life balance, but you're in this for the long game. You're in this for the long run. You're hopefully not just going to have another four-year career because that's what our schooling has kind of conditioned us to, but it's going to be a really long career. And so you want to be able to be sustainable. You want to sustain yourself and you want to, you can't just prove yourself one. You have to, once, you have to keep proving yourself. You have to, every time you change teams, every time you change projects, every time you change companies, you're going to have to keep proving yourself because they're going to have to see it for themselves as well. So finding that work-life balance, being able to step away every now and then, it also recharges you, right? It gets you fresh. It kind of helps you get better perspective. Um, and you just don't get too drained by it. But yeah, be, and then the other thing I would say is there's your work life, there's your, there's your home life. And maybe you have your work spouse. I def, I've definitely had my work spouses and my, and my home spouse because there's people you work with so much, but each, when you're in each element, try to be really present in that element. There's been some companies where I've worked at and you're there all the time and sometimes you're like doing some of your home stuff at work and you're sometimes watching TV at work and uh, on the side or whatever and then you go home and you find yourself working. You're like, this is backwards. What am I doing? But I've also been in workplaces where when you're at work, you're at work. And you're putting in, maybe you only put in eight hours, but you put in some solid eight out productivity in those eight hours. And then you go home and you can be home and you can enjoy a nice meal, some TV shows, and like actually enjoy them instead of having to always do that 24 seven split life. It's a lot more productive to be here and then be there. That's and then, I, you know, I, I would ask a lot of my mentors, me like, what is one thing that you'd go back and do again? And they'd be like, I wish I would have used my vacation. And it's actually true. Like, I've, I tend to use my vacation. When it's available, I use it. Because I've worked for that. It's, it's, a, it's accumulated, and I've worked for it. And if it keeps accumulating and you don't use it, then it almost starts to become a burden to take, to take vacation. And there's never a good time to take vacation. Work is never going to be like, you know what? You should take vacation next week. There's always going to be something that's on fire. There's always going to be something that's going to be, they're going to need you for. They'll figure it out. That's what the team is for, right? That's why you have your team players and your, your team, because they'll, they'll figure it out. So definitely when you need it, if you need that, that mental break, if you just need a break, take it, because you'll come back even more ready to be 100% or 110%. Um, so yeah, I encourage you to find your own motto. What's your motto? What, what gets you through to your next goal? What gets you through to your, what drives you? What's your passion? Where do you want to be? The more that you can define where you want to be, the more that other people can help you get there. Does anyone have a motto or a favorite quote that they just like? It's like their favorite. Any? Tomato, tomato, you know, that's something. I am the master of my fate. That's a good one. It's a great one. Be kind, be courageous, be bold. Yeah. Find a way or make one. Ooh, I like that one. Yeah. There's a lot of great ones out there. So try to find yours. Try to find your motto. Find what drives you, what will get you to graduation, and then what will get you to that first job, and so on and so forth. Um, I am also, you can find me on LinkedIn. Feel free to connect. If you want to ask me like technical artist questions, also happy to answer those anytime and always. Um, and if we, at Google, there are so many internships. And there's also a lot of jobs. Feel free to look at it. Um, and 
if there's anything of interest, let me know. Um, I also have business cards for our recruiter that if there is one, if you're interested in like the interview process or in the internship process, um, she could answer all your questions. Um, her name is Kelsey, so just when you email the email alias, direct it to Kelsey and she'll know that um, you heard it from us. So thank you. I should put those business cards out. I also have my own business cards I'll put out too if you guys want those. Um, they're actually kind of fun. I just got these. I'm going to show you. Oh my god. They're like little, little cardboards. Um, yeah, any questions? Yes. I have a question about the team structure at Google. Yeah. It's a great question. Um, so I am on a team of about 20 people, but we're within a group that's about 800, and we're within a company that's 90,000. So it's very autonomous. It's one of those companies where you make of it what you want. It's not, you're, you try to figure out how you can come in and solve the problem, how you can come in and help and how you can find what you want to be doing there. It's a place that really rewards you working on what you want to do. Um, because they know that if you're doing what you want to do, they're getting the most out of it. We have, so my team specifically is called Immersive Arts. And we're focused on creating 3D content for VR and AR experiences and, and how we can scale that and how we can share that with other people, and how we can help other groups within Google um, bring 3D content into their space. They're pretty 2D right now, you know, screens. So how can they use 3D in their products and in their apps and all that kind of stuff? So it's a very transparent company, which is great. It's got its pros and its cons. Apple was the opposite. It was a very disclosure-based company, um, which also has its pros and cons. And they... So they do have like some of their own, we have some of our own products that we're driving. So we just announced um, Playground, which is like the new AR stickers. It's kind of a 3D version of AR stickers um, for the Pixel. And, but on the side, we're also just trying to see how we can innovate uh, with 3D in, in the company and how can we all help other teams and help them push what they're doing with 3D. So they, Google also has this thing called the 20% projects where 20% of your time you can spend helping another team or coming up with your own project that you think is really cool that you want to try that you think would help the group. And they, and then sometimes, you know, that helps you even find something else you want to do. So the people teams? Absolutely. I would say the average is about every two years a person changes a team. Um, because say they did that 20% project, they work with that team and they're like, I really love what that team is doing. I want to join it, and they can. Could you tell me some of the pros and cons that you just uh, referenced? Uh, yes. So in a disclosed environment, you have to be disclosed in order to talk about the project. So it's great because the pros are you have less leaks. Only it's on a need-to-know basis, so not as many people are finding out what you're doing, and you can kind of keep it contained. You know, only speak about it when you're in within four walls and everyone in the room is disclosed. Um, but the cons of that is there's a lot of redundancy that happens. There's a lot of people working on the same thing, and they don't know about it because they don't know what's happening. There's the the pro of it. There's also it's harder to cross-functionally collaborate because you have Maybe somehow you get a whiff of what another team is doing. You're like, we should talk. And you have that first conversation, and it's like really awkward because you can't really talk about it until they're actually disclosed. But you're like, we just need to find out if we should get you disclosed. So what do you do? That's a great question. So it, it, it gets, you can eventually get past it, but there's just a lot more hurdles that way. Um, and collaboration does happen, but the, it's just... You really have to push for it. It doesn't. It's not as fluid. Whereas at Google, everyone has access to the source code. Everyone has access to everyone else's docs, or team docs at least. Like it's, you can search the internal Google internet and find pretty much anything that Google is doing. And so 
you can be like, oh my God, this team is doing this, we should talk to them. And you already know what they're doing and then you can just talk about how you can help and you can pitch what you do and help educate and help collaborate in that sense. And that transparency is amazing, but there's a lot of leaks. They leak a lot of their stuff, um, which is unfortunate, but it's kind of that what happens. Um, and then they have, they don't have, they still have redundancy, but they encourage the redundancy because uh, they're having multiple teams tackle the same problem and see what what their perspectives bring. And it's like actually. We, this problem, this is great for this kind of product and this is great for this kind of product. Like one of the big differences between Apple and Google that I found, they're both really successful companies, right? They're kind of small, they're, they're, they're big companies, right? They're, they're great at what they do, um, but they approach it in different ways. Apple is, they say no to a lot of things to say yes to that one thing that they're gonna do so well and they're gonna be first class in that and when they put out a product, Everyone knows about it. You know that they have iPhones. You know that they have MacBooks. You know that they have, their, their product line is a lot smaller, but it's really high quality. And it's first class. Google, they throw darts at the wall. And they're like, that one kind of stuck. Let's try it again. And maybe this time we'll do it this way. Or let's try, and you know, they just keep iterating on it. It's more of a, it's a very iterative type of process which is great, and they come out with these, with all of these great different products, so many different ideas. But a lot of times you don't know about it. Does anyone know what Spotlight Stories are? Does anyone know what, uh, eat? like there's all these products that people don't even know about, but they're there, and they're cool, um, but they're, there's just a lot of them. But they're, they're two different types of models, and they're both successful, so there's pros and cons. Of course. Anything else? So you had discussed the work-life balance a bit. And you know, one of the things I always found curious is that th there should be a divide, you're right. But like, you know, whenever you go home that one day, you know, other people just get a little like, you know, not angry, but disappointed. Like how do you how would you feel is a good way to fight that type of work? Especially in the game industry where it's like if you're not working sixty hours at the minimum, it's like, what are you doing? You know? Like, Great question. Um, it is about the culture. And if the, your, your community, your people, your team understand that. Um, you know, I used to always be like, people with kids, it's not fair. They can just be like, my kid's sick, I'm going to go home. Or like, I have to go pick up my kids from work. i got to leave now, right? I, didn't, I don't have that excuse. But you, everyone has their own situation. Everyone has a reason. As long as it's not a habit, you know, like every now and then I need to go home early or like if you're, if you communicate it, if you're open about it and set those expectations of like, hey guys, I'm going to work, I'm going to, this week, I'm only, I'm not going to be here Friday, but for the, these four days, I'm all ears, get to me what you need by end of day, like end of week, but I, you know, just set expectations and that helps. Um, sometimes if you just kind of ghost then yeah, they're like, what the, what the hell, man? Where'd you go? I needed to ask you a question. But if you set the expectation and they can ask you that question before you leave, it might help. Yeah? Uh, of the companies that you have previously worked for, which one do you miss the most and why? <sighs> I'm still in the honeymoon phase with Google, so I'm really enjoying it there. Uh, ask me again in three months. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I, I do love the culture at Google. And this isn't just to like be biased, but I think it's a great place that enables everyone and it encourages everyone and it really rewards people for doing what they want to do and for bringing, it respects everyone's expertise. Um, and it wants, and the company like, wants the people to find where their expertise really fits into all of the options that there are to do there. Um, there's so much going on that you will find what you're looking for. You just have to be proactive and find it. It's not one of those places where you can sit back and wait for it to come to you or, or that kind of thing. So I think it's just a really empowering place to be. Um, honestly, I've enjoyed every company I've worked at. And I've never tried to leave the company. I've always just been seeking those better opportunities. And it like, 
I took advantage of every company I was at while I was there and made the most of it while I was there and got great experience and I've learned so much at each of the company, each of the companies that I've been at, um, that I've always been ready that like if this better opportunity presents itself, maybe this is the right time. And usually when you leave on a good note, um, you could always go back. And that could be kind of one of those like, I'm gonna do this right now, maybe I'll be back. Um, Let's see, at Lucasfilm, it was really fun to work on Star Wars stuff. It's a great IP, it's a great culture. Everyone's really passionate about what they do. And you know, there's definitely days when I'm like on the mocap stage. We would bring for some of our demos, we would literally bring the R2-D2 robot down on the stage and mocap him, and R2 would play himself. And then everyone, we'd have actors that play other people. But like, I'm like, is this my day job? I'm just mocap in R2 today? All right. Um, at Apple, they have so many resources that I felt like that was my first exposure into being able to really learn a lot about other things to start going wide. That was a place where I started going wide. I started learning more about project management. I started learning more about um, all the other initiatives that the company was doing. Um, and so I think that was a great thing for me. EA was fun because they uh, they had that kind of cyclical process, right? We were on a, a yearly, annual yearly game. And that's a very redundant way to say that, but an annual game. And being able to figure out what the next game's going to look like, what's the, what's the new feature that we want to try to implement, um, that prototyping type of role was really interesting to me. So there's something about everything that I've done so far that I really enjoy. That's why it's important to try, like find what you want to do and and work where you want to work and like want to go to day, work every day. You get you get a lot out of it. Easier said than done, but you can do it. Any other questions? Like I said, if you guys have any other questions, any tech artist related questions, or just like random questions. Um, feel free to reach out. Otherwise, thank you.